Hey, hey everyone. Today I'm picking up on my social media marketing for beginners series with a beginner's guide to my favorite platform, Twitter. We've already covered Instagram, which I'll link up here and be sure to turn on channel notifications for more platforms dropping this week. They should be happening on Wednesday and Friday. Also be sure to check out the description box for your special invitation to my next live training. You won't want to miss out on this. It's totally free and it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's hop in. So first, some quick Twitter platform stats. According to a study by Pew Research into US adults using social media, one in five reported using Twitter on a regular basis. 70% of Twitter users are men, and most Twitter users are between the ages of 18 through 49. About 500 million tweets are created per day, and 10% of Twitter users create 92% of tweets. Most Twitter users come to the app to be entertained and cite this as one of their main reasons for logging in. So if you wanna stand out on Twitter, Twitter, make sure that every tweet is punchy, expressive, and thoughtful so that you can entertain, connect with, and really captivate your audience. While a tweet is the base unit of content that comes to mind when you think of Twitter, there's so much more to the platform. As of today, these are the main features that you can use on Twitter. First, tweets. Twitter is a platform where words really matter, and the heart of Twitter is the good old tweet feature. Unlike other platforms that put video or images first, most successful users' core Twitter strategies strategy really just relies on thoughtful words. Tweets are limited to 280 characters of copy, but adding a link within a tweet will reduce your character limit by 23. You can also respond to your own tweet to create what's referred to as a thread. This is a popular content format for wordy people. It almost acts as a mini blog post and is used to convey complex or detailed thoughts. Next, retweets. Retweeting is a way of sharing content that someone else originally created to your own profile. Clicking the double arrow button on a tweet will bring up two options, retweet or quote retweet. Retweeting allows you to share the post as is, or you can select quote retweet if you wanna add your own thoughts to it. This is really useful for interacting with others while sharing your own perspective. And of course, if you don't wanna share the original content but still want to have a conversation, you can simply reply using the single arrow to chat with the original creator. Next, photos and video. You can share videos and photos as a part of your tweets, so you're not just limited to text and outbound links. You can record in-app or upload a pre-recorded or designed image or video to your tweet. 90% of Twitter video sessions are on mobile and tweets with video are also six times more likely to be retweeted than tweets with photos. So if you're looking to increase the number of people interacting with your content, adding videos to your tweets is a great way to get more people to share what you've posted. You can also share a collection of up to four images if you're going for more of a collage or album look. Next is Twitter Spaces. Twitter Spaces was Twitter's response to audio platform Clubhouse back in 2021. And if you missed the rise of that platform, which does still exist by the way, in summary, it's a group calling app. Think Zoom calls without video, or for those of us who remember them, a three, four, or more way call. Taking advantage of the rise of the invite only audio app clubhouse, Twitter created Twitter spaces where anyone with 600 or more followers can host a live audio room. Listeners can interact with emoji to react to creator conversations and it provides a casual streaming experience within a platform that many users are already a part of. And lastly, live. Yes, you can still live stream on Twitter, on iOS, Android, or desktop with Twitter's Media Studio producer. You can also use a tool like StreamYard, which is my preferred streaming platform. Live streams are a great way to engage followers in real time, like Twitter spaces, but you'll be able to communicate with visuals instead of just relying on audio. Okay, so let's get into the essentials for jazzing up your profile. Every Twitter profile features a profile picture, banner, bio, and your timeline of tweets underneath the profile header. You can also pin specific tweets to the top of your timeline just underneath the profile header and include a link in your bio. So you have 160 characters in your Twitter bio. So make sure to make every word, actually every letter count. If you're using Twitter to establish your personal brand, it's important that anyone who views your profile understands what you do as soon as they see your bio. Some things that you may want to include are who you are, in mine, I say I'm a video creator, podcaster, and founder. What you do, I'm currently writing a book, 
and how you bring value or what your goal is on Twitter. Mine really is meeting friends, which is represented by, I met all my best friends on the internet. And I also share a link to my YouTube channel so people can get to know me a little bit better. Twitter bios are also searchable and indexed by platforms like Google. So you can include relevant keywords or hashtags in your bio to make your profile more discoverable. So if you were the author of a book that was getting a lot of press, I'd be sure to include the name of it in your bio. And if you have a popular podcast or course, you can add that in there if there's room. Like on any platform, your profile picture is gonna be someone's first impressions of you. So make sure to put your best foot or face forward. Whether this is a logo or an inviting headshot, make sure that your profile picture is well lit and clear, has plenty of contrast to make it easy to see, and is properly cropped so that viewers can make out the details that they need to see. And hey, while a logo is okay if you have a brand account, in most cases, I'd say that Twitter really is a platform for people. So my recommendation is to use a photo of yourself if you can, not a photo of your product, not your book cover, not a cartoon. There are of course some exceptions to the rule, but having a photo of yourself representing your profile will encourage people to trust you and wanna to get to know you better. Your Twitter banner is also valuable real estate. A lot of users on Twitter use banners to showcase an upcoming project or a lead magnet in landscape format. Get creative with your banner by working backward. Think about what action you want someone on Twitter to take after they visit your profile and then tailor your banner to that. Glennon Doyle, for example, showcases the name of her podcast. Me, I have one of my signature courses listed up there. You might have a showcase of products that you sell, your tour dates if you're a band, or highlights from your YouTube channel if you're a creator. Then under the edit your profile option, you can add a website into the URL section of your profile. Wherever you link to, just make sure that first the link in bio options are easy to read and the options are clear. Make sure that you don't overwhelm people with too many options or too much information. And of course, that your link in bio aligns with the exact actions you want someone to take after they visit your profile. I have a standard links page on my website, which I use across all of my socials, latashajames.com slash links. On this page, I list the key offers that are available at that time, as well as links to my most recent YouTube video if people wanna watch. If you have a tweet that's performed really well or that you think is a great representation of your personal brand, and then just click the three dots next to your tweet and select pin to profile. Your pinned tweet will show up at the top of your timeline just under your profile header, regardless of how long ago it was originally published. A good option for pinned tweets is to choose a tweet that helps guide viewers to the call to action that you've chosen since the pinned tweet will be the first thing a follower sees. Mine is essentially just a visual version of my links page. It offers people the opportunity to click over to my YouTube channel, my podcast, or my course website. So as far as strategy goes, I consider Twitter to be mostly an awareness and engagement focused platform. While you can run ads that are focused on app installs or website clicks, the magic of Twitter for me is really in the connections that I build with new audiences and the conversations that I can tap into. It's generally looked at pretty negatively to constantly spam with links or be overly self-promotional on this platform. Instead, you really wanna post meaningful or entertaining content that falls in line with your content pillar. For example, I post about entrepreneurship and social media. Some days that means that I'm sharing a few tips for preventing burnout and others I'm quote tweeting a social media platform and adding my commentary on their platform changes. A jewelry maker might post about fashion trends or celebrity events like the Met Gala and a journalist will probably focus on current events. When it comes to frequency, according to Hootsuite, the optimal amount of posts to publish on Twitter is between one and five times a day to see growth. But that's not to say that this is mandatory since what's most important is a consistent, sustainable schedule. I'm gonna say that for every platform, you all know that every platform is different, but with Twitter, you really don't have to shy away from posting kind of as much as you want. Things move very fast over there. I'll also say that in most cases, I'd recommend publishing manually to Twitter. Very rarely do I ever schedule a Tweet, as so much of the conversation is guided by what's trending that day or what's going on in the day-to-day -day of my own business or life. Now your content pillars are what guide every piece of content
that you create. That term might sound fancy and complicated, but it really just means that each piece of content should align with your brand values and mission. I've got a whole video breaking down the concept up here as well, so you can check that out. But when you set up brand pillars ahead of time, it makes it so much easier to plan content and make sure that your content is moving you closer towards your goals. So if you were a freelance copywriter looking to work at a marketing agency, for example, you might have content pillars of copywriting examples, marketing trends, and life in the city that you live and work in or that the agency is based in. Okay. So how do you get people to actually see your tweets? Well, Twitter is a super searchable platform in a couple of ways. First, there's hashtags. Clicking on a hashtag within a tweet will bring up a bunch of other content that uses the same hashtag, so you can peruse those. According to Twitter Business, there are a couple of important don'ts for hashtagging on Twitter though. First, you don't want to over hashtag. One to two relevant hashtags per tweet is really the most that I would recommend. And don't try forcing your brand slogan or personal messaging to be a hashtag. If it doesn't organically fit within a tweet, it'll feel really forced and it'll lose its intended purpose. I personally rarely recommend using hashtags at all because the keywords within your content are searchable on their own. For example, if I write a tweet that says, here are my top tips for social media marketing, and then somebody types in social media marketing into Twitter's search bar, mine will still be included in the results. There are of course some great use cases for hashtags though, like events, for example, VidCon 2022 or brand campaign hashtags like Nike's just do it. Twitter's native analytics are available to all users on Twitter and shows data on follower gains and losses, impressions, engagement rate, retweets, and a bunch more. Your analytics dashboard will default to an overview of your top stats, including top tweet by number of impressions or number of times that your post was seen, top mentions by engagement, engagements like replies, likes, or retweets, your top media tweet, meaning ones that include an image or video and top follower, or the person with the most followers who started following you in that current month. You can also click individual tweets to see your impressions, total engagements, media engagements, detail expands, likes, link clicks, and profile clicks. As with any social platform, I recommend making a habit of looking at your Twitter analytics and at minimum reviewing which of your tweets performed the best so that you can use that information to inform your future Twitter strategy. If you notice that your audience seems to love when you include video teasers of your podcast, well, now you know to continue doing that. If there's a particular topic that seems to really get the conversation flowing, then keep talking about it. And on the flip side, if you notice that there are topics that don't really go over so well, you can consider scaling back on them if doing that feels authentic and right for you. So if you made it through to the end of the video, you've now got the basics of Twitter down. Let me know in the comments if Twitter is something that you're interested in trying out for your personal brand or if there are any other questions I can answer for you about Twitter. I'm at the Latasha James on the platform. If you want to come over and say hi, by the way, and don't forget about the link down in the description, which will be an invite to my latest free masterclass. I would love to see you there. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be back on Wednesday with the new installment of my social media marketing for beginners series. I will see you then. Bye.